Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Jason. This is our Creation Homestead. We're in the kitchen today. We'll do some more canning. We bought a few things uh, from Whole Foods uh, this past weekend that we're gonna can. It sounds great. We got we got excited about this idea, and so I'm gonna spin you around here on the island and let Angela Kay say what she's got going on. Okay. Today we are going to be canning pineapple, and first I'm gonna show you how to how to dismember a pineapple. First, we need to take care of the top. Cut its head off! <laughs> so we're going to just cut about an inch or so below the base. That way you don't get any of the fibers from the, the base, from the head of it. You always scare me. I think you're going to keep cutting your finger off. Like you go, <laughs> off of their fingers. Sorry. And now we need to cut off the, the bottom end. See, it's indented there. So you want to cut in. See, isn't that beautiful? Yep. Now, you have it on its side like this. Now you want to sit it up so that you can see the eyes. See, these are the eyes. You want to be able to see the eyes so you go just past the eyes. See, you want to start right here. And you want to start cutting downward. Now, curve your knife just a little bit as you go with the natural curve of the pineapple. And see, you just missed all those eyes. And see, if you see little black specks like that, that is a pineapple seed. They're, high, they're completely edible. They're, they're fine. Okay, so now you keep going around just trimming away from those eyes because you want to get those eyes out. They're very prickly to eat. I would not suggest to them. I would not suggest eating Much the eyes. smart going down, huh? Yes. <laughs> so, see where you can see this line of eyes? Just shear right down, just past them. And see, you get a clean cut that way. And if you have to shear off some extra on the end, just hold it up and shear it off. Now, I'm going to go all the way around, and then I'll show you what we do. See the core right there. You really don't want that core in there because it is tough. So you want to cut it in half. Make sure you cut across the core. Okay. Now you've got two equal parts and you've got half the core in one half, half in the other. Now you want to set it back up and you want to cut the core in half again. Now you've got two more sections that are very slippery. Now you want to do that again with this half. See that the core's there? Cut the core in half. And now you have four sections with just a small piece of core in each one. Now you want to take your knife and go just behind the core and go down until you get all the core up. There's your core. Now save the core because I'm going to use that core. So you want to do that with all four pieces. See there, there's all your cores. That's the easiest way to get out a core unless you have a pineapple core, which are ri really unnecessary because you, as long as you have a good sharp knife, as you can see, it's been very easy to break down this pineapple. Now, we are going to flip over our sections of pineapple. Okay, you have all your sections flipped over. That way you can get an easy cut. Now I'm going to cut this in thirds. That way you get a good chunk, but not too big. Now I slice them about this, about this thick. And now you have pieces about like that. You can cut them bigger, you can cut them smaller. Um, if you want crushed pineapple, you want to crush it after, before you put it in the recipe. You really don't want to can crushed pineapple. Uh, there's too many, it packs down too much and makes too much room for 
foodborne illnesses like botulism to grow. So you really don't want to do that. They can do it commercially because they have very high pressure pressure canners that they can this stuff with. So they can do that. <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> Not safely. But you can easily take these chunks of pineapple when they are done. You can easily open up a jar and just take a potato masher, mash them up just a little bit, and you've got crushed pineapple, or just put them in a food processor and just pulse it a couple of times and you've got crushed pineapple. And it's after you've canned them. After you've canned it. Now I'm gonna finish cutting these up and then I'll show you what we do next. Normally I will put things in a stainless steel bowl. You do not wanna do that with pineapple. It's highly acidic and can react with a stainless steel bowl. As well, your knife. The minute you get done chopping your pineapple, you wanna immediately go wash this knife off because the high acidity level in the pineapple or any citrus type fruit will dull your blade in a matter of minutes. It will start to wear down the blade of your knife. So you want to immediately wash this. Now you can use a stainless steel spoon to dip this into your jars because it's barely touching it for a very short period of time. I also would not recommend using a stainless steel pot when you are cooking this. Okay, now we're gonna make our syrup. You can also can these in natural juice, but I'm gonna do an extremely light syrup. So what we have in here, we have one cup of pure cane sugar, and to that, I am going to add five and a half cups of water. See, it's gonna be an extremely light syrup. Remember I told you to save those cores. This is just something that I, I like to do. This, the cores have so much flavor, it's going to impart a pineapple flavor into your syrup. That way your syrup is not just sugar syrup, it's pineapple syrup. So put all those cores into your syrup. Now bring this to a boil over medium high heat and you want to bring this just to a gentle bubble and then I'll show you what we do next. Okay, as you can see, it's at a bubble now. So I'm gonna turn the heat back to medium and you can't really see it in the camera, but it has colored, the, the cores have colored the water. It is a little more yellow. So you wanna go ahead and pull out your cores now. And the, the cores are a little softer and they've imparted a lot of flavor because actually you can smell pineapple in the syrup now. So you wanna drain off all the syrup off of them though. <laughs> you don't wanna miss out on any of your syrup. So now that your cores are out, now you want to add in your pineapple, but you want to do this in batches because you don't want, you don't want part of your pineapple to get overcooked while the rest of it is being jarred up. Because so, it's just a light cook, right? It's not, yes. it's very little. So we're only putting in about half of our pineapple and I'm gonna do this the safe way. Please. I'm not gonna dump that. That's gonna splash. <laughs> So I'm gonna do it the safe way. I'm gonna put in half my pineapple. And that, that syrup is very hot. <laughs> well, sugar, yeah, it's, hint, sugar gets really hot. <laughs> okay, now we're, we're almost there. We'll do one more spoonful. They, my hands are immaculately clean, by the way. <laughs> okay, now we've done about half our pineapple. Now you want to leave them in this syrup for one minute. That's, that's it, just one minute. You want to let them cook in there for one minute. The point of that, you are going to see some people that is going to raw pack their pineapple into their jars and then pour the hot syrup over it. That is not necessarily the safest practice because each one of these little pieces of pineapple, you see all those little air pockets. Remember, I've told you, air is the enemy of canned goods. The syrup cannot seep into all those air pockets if you don't cook them. So you're better off hot packing. Now remember, this is only one minute. You see, it's yeah, you not see, gonna cook. You can see bubbles floating too, by the way. It's not going to cook. Yeah. So just leave it for one minute, 
and then we'll start jarring it up. In that process, we're gonna cover something. Some of you may be thinking, why do I want to can pineapple? Can't I just go to the store and pick up a pineapple, a can of pineapple anytime I want it? Or I can always find fresh pineapple, whatever. First of all, we can't always find fresh pineapple in season like we'd like for it, okay? That just doesn't happen. Um, so what we do, or what we're doing this year, actually for the first time, but mind you, okay, is we bought three uh, organic pineapples, okay? This is what she's using, this is three, I'm not sure we've said that. This is three organic pineapples, okay? We paid $4 a piece for each one of those pineapples, and from each one of those pineapples, we're gonna get two cans, okay? Or they're about two plus some, maybe. We're gonna, we're gonna find out. But, if you go to buy a can of organic pineapple, you're gonna pay $4 for one can of pineapple, which is probably half of the amount, or less, that you're getting off of each individual pineapple. So, it is a little more financially efficient, it's food security, it's having stuff on hand that you've controlled, by the way. You've controlled your, the sugar intake, you've controlled the sweetness factor, you've controlled everything about it, except for how it was grown. But it's organic, so you know that you've picked up an organic product, okay? And if you go buy a can of commercially produced pineapple, it's going to be a GMO syrup, it's going to, it's going to not be organic, it's going to be... Um, any kind of preservatives that they may have picked up. It may be cheaper, you may only pay a couple dollars for it, but it's, you're, you're not getting as clean of a product as you're gonna get if you can it yourself. Okay, so it's, it's food security, it's cleaner product, it's, it's a little more financially efficient if you're buying organic. So all these factors are in play into why we are choosing to do this ourselves and have it on hand ourselves. Now, I told you about the stainless steel, but to scoop it out, you can use a stainless steel slotted spoon because it's barely touching it. It's not like it's sitting on there for, for 20 minutes or so. It's barely touching it. So you want to scoop in and you want to bring out your pineapple and you want to fill your jar hot, with your pineapple. Hot jar? Hot jar. I've sterilized them in the dishwasher. You can sterilize them. You can wash them really good and sterilize them by putting them in your canner or you can do it in the dishwasher. I choose to do it in the dishwasher. Now you wanna fill, you wanna put in your pineapple to about an inch or so headspace because you wanna leave room for your syrup. So you don't wanna overfill with the pineapple. That's where you're at. So we're about an inch headspace right there. Now we're gonna scoop off our syrup. Now you wanna stick your ladle in now, some pineapple's gonna wanna come with you, but try to avoid getting more pineapple. Get your syrup and pour that beautiful syrup over the top and bring it up to a half inch headspace. Okay. Now, you definitely want to debubble this. Yep. So I've got my handy dandy debubbling tool and you want to push down all around and see when you do this with something with something like this where you have chunks it's always when you do debubble it's always going to take your headspace down and it actually may show you like this there are a couple of pieces too much pineapple in there so we're, we're actually going to spoon a couple of those pieces of pineapple off because it's going to be too much you don't want to stick up sticking its head up you don't want it sticking its head up. Nope. So now we're going to put in just a little bit more syrup because it took down our headspace. There we go. Now, because this is sticky stuff, clean your jar really well. Clean the rim really well. Now put over here, I have my lids and I have put a light, wash them really well, and I have put a ladle full of hot boiling water from my canner which you should already have boiling right now put your lid on and now put your ring on just finger tight you don't want to wrench it down just finger tight now we will load it into the canner isn't that absolutely gorgeous looks good now we're going to put that in and we're going to keep filling the jars and when all of the pineapple is out of the liquid you will put in the last batch let it go for one minute and then you'll jar those up. Okay, last beautiful jar going in. 
we got six jars out six of good jars. out of three medium pineapples. Yeah. And now because this is the ball electric water bath canner, you will have a plate to put on top of them. And as you can see, you're already seeing bubbles, big bubbles come up. That is the air releasing from the jars. You want that. So now you slide your plate in. You can also do this on a stove top canner or even in just a stock pot on yep. the stove. Now you want to put your lid on and you want to bring this back up to a boil. When you start seeing bubbles coming up really good to the top, you want to set your timer. You want to process this for 15 minutes for pints, 20 minutes for quarts. And then you want to turn off your heat. You want to let it sit for 10 minutes and then I'll show you what we do next. You see that beautiful golden syrup there? Don't throw it away. And when you open a jar of the pineapple, do not throw it away. That beautiful golden syrup, use that. Next time you make sweet tea, don't put the sugar in it. Put this in there. Then you've got pineapple sweet tea. And I don't think anybody will complain about pineapple sweet tea. It's been 15 minutes, then we let it sit for 10. Now we're ready to pull them out. Now you want to pull straight up. Do not tip. You want to pull straight up and straight out. And that is absolutely nice. gorgeous. It is. That's cool. That is beautiful pineapple. That's pretty. Look at there. Can pineapple in your house. Did you think you could can your own pineapple? Of course. <laughs> well, I know you thought so. <laughs> well, you were asking Silly me a question. Head. You asked me a question. It was meant for the peoples. Um, the people's pineapple. This is the people's pineapple. Now, you can let that water that's on top of the jars, you can let that, it will evaporate, but sometimes it will leave water spots. Or you can just take a paper towel or a rag and you can just dab it off. Just very gently dab, but do not touch the popper in the center, although I think that one's already sealed. Um, you can just dab it off, t not touching the popper, and then you want to let these sit for 18 to 24 hours. Do not touch them, do not move them around. Then you can take the lids off. The well, rings. not the lids. <laughs> Don't take not the lids. lids. You can take the rings off and mark them and store them away. All right, y'all. There you have it. Some beautiful canned pineapple, full of pineapple. At that mind you, where the where the canned juice pineapple you get in the store is probably gonna be a lot of liquid. You got full pineapple in there. Beautiful, absolutely wonderful organic pineapple canned in your own home. So if you're looking for you know preparing yourself you know for whatever situation might come might come your way <laughs> you know we're not exactly preppers but if you're looking to do some prepping that's a, that's a great place to to add to your uh, prepper pantry it's a great thing just for food security in general and you're taking control now look again you're taking control of your own food on your terms in your way correct that's that's a lot of what we like to do here so thank you guys so much for watching again my name is jason that is angela k the brilliant canner Angela K. the Canner. But anyways, <laughs> love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. God bless you and goodbye.